Welcome to my sewing room. We have such an exciting show for you today. A little later on, I will introduce to you my very special guest, Pam Mashey. Pam is Education Director of Baby Lock USA. Pam has brought some wonderful samples to share with you. This is the most adorable pillow. It says forever love done in wonderful white and red. Such a wonderful present for Valentine's Day with the scallops on the edge, the wing needle entredeau and lots of beautiful decorative stitching. Another really beautiful Valentine pillow. And I have a little secret to tell you. You know, these edges are uh, like this beautiful wide collar piece I used to call them when I was doing smocking on them. These from Switzerland can cost $30 or $40 a yard. And Pam has made her very own using her sewing machine. We're going to be talking a lot about borders. Here is some, a really beautiful border done on a pillowcase that is a cross-stitch style. Here is another beautiful border done on this pretty lime green pillowcase with just scallops going up and down. And another very beautiful border with an inset, sort of like Australian window pane. And then some beautiful cut work done by machine, of course. And since you know this is the lingerie series, Pam has done a perfectly wonderful set of pajamas for you. Look at this wonderful pocket that has the machine embroidered insertion with wing needle entredeau on either side. And I want to show you these buttons she's done. Pam has taken just a tiny little design out of the design we used on the pocket and, it's, and made covered buttons with that wonderful little design. One more thing I'd like to share with you is this beautiful table runner with a pretty silver thread. I think that's quite magnificent and almost looks like a silhouette of Martha Washington on the front. So that may be a very historic table runner. And now won't you come along to the technique boards with me and I'll share with you some very special things. I'm so happy to share with you a really easy method for making a beautiful insertion. First, I have to draw my lines. This is the center line and two more lines on the other side. Then I go ahead and place the fabric into the hoop where I'll know exactly where I'm going to stitch. Then this beautiful machine embroidery with the pale pink flowers and the green leaves that come down and then it switches to the other side mirror image. I will make the whole piece as long as I need it. After completing the machine embroidery, I'm going to do the beautiful wing needle entredeau on one side. Now, by the way, you do take it out of the hoop for this. And then you can see after both sides have been completed with a beautiful wing needle entredeau, then I trace off my seam allowance on either side. And then I'm going to trim away so I have my insertion, which is really like the insertions that have been coming out of Switzerland for years, with the seam allowance on each side. Now, how do I attach the rest of my pajamas to this? Okay, I have my pajama fashion fabric. I write, put it right sides to right sides, and I simply serge my fabric so my insertion is indeed inserted. And now then, I would like to introduce to you my friend, pa friend Pam Mashey. She is Education Director of Baby Lock USA. Pam, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Martha. It's great to be here. And what we'd like to do is show you today just exactly how we did the insertion. Here we have the wing needle insertion as well as the embroidery. And let me give you those. Oh, these here, are so, so that you can pretty. take a look a little closer at the look at those. Here we have the insertion uh, step by steps as we saw on the board, and it is important that we have the center lines and the outside lines marked before we actually place it into our hoop. We want to make sure that our fabric is going to be placed straight into the fabric, the fabric into the hoop, and also that it is straight of grain. We also have now, when, when it's completed, we have the design stitched out, and we're wanting to then uh, place the wing needle into the machine and do that lovely stitch. I don't need to use my foot control because the machine will sew by itself. Oh, so here I like we that. have, yeah, it has. It's like a cruise control <laughs> like button. Like a cruise control. And then it gives you 
the ability to just simply guide the fabric without having to place any special pressure on the presser foot, giving you a nice even speed that now you're going what, to be sewing. Uh, what is that? A one one ten wing needle, one twenty. It, it's a one hundred. One hundred. You wing could needle. use okay. a one hundred, uh, one twenty, or a one ten, depending upon the type of fabric that you're sewing. Are you on using also. stabilizer? I'm not using any stabilizer because we have a very nice uh, fabric as well as the feed system on the machine. Oh my goodness. Once we have that completed, we are going to again mark both sides so that we have our cutting line. Once it's trimmed away, we then will serge the fashion fabric onto the insertion as we mentioned in the step by steps. Having it surged again gives us a very neat look to the uh, garment. Well, you know something, I'm going to hold up these adorable pajamas one more time for everybody to see. Uh, this is really an absolutely incredibly beautiful, very tailored, mm -hmm. and yet very soft and feminine too for right. the pajamas that go with a little pajama shirt that we're going to show in a few minutes. Yeah. I really love the way that has been inserted. I especially like too the fact that you've used a pink thread on this wonderful pink Swiss flannel. Thank you so much, Pam. And you know what? Pam has another piece of lovely lingerie for you. Pam has brought some beautiful antique garments along with her, which also have served as part of her inspiration. Pam, tell us a little bit about your collection here. Well, the collection, Martha, that I have here is actually a very special gift that a 97-year-old friend of mine has given to me, and she actually made these. She oh. was a home ec teacher, oh. and she labored over these many, many hours and actually used them as part of, part of her bridal trousseau. Oh. And taking some of this inspiration hand embroidery right the, on the hand camisole. the hand embroidery and now we can do so many of these techniques by machine and really speeds up and, Tell us and about aids this little this. It, I love it I just love <laughs> this little outfit or ensemble it the dressing jacket or the little bed jacket along with the little bonnet you know really you have so many techniques that are on here with the attachment of the lace the decorative edge border as well as the the French knots Oh my, and isn't it wonderful that we have sewing machines today that do all this wonderful embroidery that we do not have to do all this by hand as your little right, friend did. It, exactly. And Look it takes, at this petticoat. Mm -hmm. and, and how easy it is to do. Here they had to do every single one of these buttonholes by hand and we can just zip out buttonholes so quickly to create a beading or a oh, border. I love buttonhole beading. Now that is something that really is easy to do, even Very the really easy. wide ones, yeah. which yeah. put this really pretty wide ribbon through. Oh my goodness, here's another little... Uh, another These are so cute. They're little, like a little bloomer. Drawers, yeah. little drawers, drawers was they button Underwear as well as a camisole. That was pretty it, convenient. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Plus, you know, it's just so elegant and makes you feel so, so feminine. So special. But mm -hmm. I am truly glad that we have the machine the embroidery. The so, machine, yes, so we yes. did. Now this is the adorable little pajama top that Pam has made to go with the pajama pants that you saw a few minutes ago. Look at this wonderful pocket with the machine entredo at the top and the bottom hem stitching. And once again, I really, Pam, I just love the way you cover the little buttons with just a tiny little bit. You just a pulled a little bit, bit of your embroidery right, design out. A little bit out. of this design here okay. was done okay. on the uh, fabric and then simply trimmed around and covered the button to just give it that finished touch. With a very modern look, with, with the patterns we have for this series. Right. Show us what okay. you're, how you actually used your hem stitch for the real way. Okay. The hem stitch. The <laughs> hem stitch, exactly. We use the wing needle and all of the people that are watching, the viewers, may not know with the wing needle it does have this wide edge on the outside which will create the holes on the fabric. I say it looks a little like a ski. A, a wing needle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is the one time we do want to have holes in our fabric when we're stitching. <laughs> so again, we're just simply going to fold our hem back on the, the pocket. We folded it to the wrong side. We're going to stitch across the top. As you can see, the machine is doing that stitching and creating those holes for the hem stitch. Again, using our cruise control. Okay. Once we have that stitching completed, what we're then going to do is take our applique scissors and we're simply just going to trim away that excess fabric from the hem. Okay. Now it's complete. You just lay and you can off. see that. That's, you know, a lot of people say to me, now Martha, what about that raw edge? 
And my answer to them is there are 10,582 stitches in there. The raw edge is not going it's anywhere. Not going is that your answer? Anywhere. To? Exactly. We probably have 100 pieces with every one of them trimmed <laughs> just like that, and they've gone through the washing machine just mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. They're very Pam, durable. Thank you so much for being You're here and very for welcome. sharing it's your glad wonderful to be here. collection okay. and, and for sharing this beautiful um, a pair of pajamas that you made, which I think a lot of our viewers will enjoy making for okay. themselves. And now then, we have some silk ribbon by hand techniques for you. I am so pleased to have as my guest today Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly has authored many articles for So Beautiful magazine, has written a book, and it really is one of the world-renowned embroidery teachers. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's always been good to be here with you and with your viewers. Now today, Martha, we're going to do a couple of the stitches that are on the kimono. And first of all, we'll do the Solomon seal, which is this lovely droopy one. And then we're going to do one that I have invented specifically for this gown, this lovely thistle type flower. Uh, it's done with a feather stitch. And it's just, we've tortured the feather stitch just a little to make it do what we want to. So first of all, I would like to start with the Solomon seal. And this is a flower which is very simple. I have done it in seven millimeter ribbon, but it can be done with the four, in a four millimeter, although it's very much more effective in the seven. And you can see I have one here, a finished flower here. Here's the first step, just a simple straight stitch with a little bit of bounce in it, not flat on the ground. Then I have put one starting just above the top and taking it to the other side. Again, a little bit of bounce coming over it. And then in this one, you can see I've got one on the other side and nice flowery one there. You will see to finish it, I have put first of all, just a little straight stitch here. And then I have a a fly stitch and a long stalk on it there. We don't worry about any leaves on it. So we'll just quickly run through that like this. There's our first stitch, come slightly above it like that, out to the side, and you can make that just a fraction longer. We do want it straight, so just put your finger there and with your thumb just carefully guide that over. Come to the other side, and once more down there like that. It gives you, just, it's a very, very simple, but just gives you a lovely big flower, which is so nice. And then we're just going to take, we'll put in first of all, that straight stitch. Oh dear, dear, straight through. <laughs> um, so we'll come like this, up there like that. And then put the, the fly stitch actually in the, in the silk ribbon. Don't put it to the side as we would normally if we were doing, say, a rosebud. And there we are, a very effective flower. These can look really good if they're drooping in groups like that. Now we'll move to our second flower. And you can see here, here's the finished flower. Here's our normal, a normal triple feather stitch here. You can see on my blouse, they have, I have just some, the normal conventional feather stitch. Now you can see here, I've put in one side first of all. It's the feather stitch, the triple feather stitch going one way and then turning it to the other and curving it in like that. So we've got the first wing, the other side, then I've put in two down through the middle there, and then finally a center one down there. Now I find this one easier to do if I do it upside down. So here we go. Here's my first stitch, then a second one like that, and then the third one like that. Now we're going to go from the other side and I'm going to do it like this, coming in like this. You can see I'm keeping it on the same side. 
with the ribbon underneath and down to the middle there like that. You can see how those make it curve in that way. Through to the back, come up to this side and do the same thing in reverse again. So we will put it like this. Here's another one like that. And the third one like that. And then out the other side. And those are the ones that curve it in towards the center. And the last one will just meet up in the middle there like that. I'll just take this through and then you can see what I've done. But you will see, very simple, the next one will come in like there, the next one through there like that, and then the last one. Make the last one, as you can see here, just a little bit longer than these, so it gives it a curved edge like that. It makes a, a really lovely droopy flower. Of course, I've done it in four millimeter ribbon. I think to try and do it in seven would just be impossible. But you'll also see that again, for the top, I've simply done a fly stitch across like that. And that just finishes it off and lets it droop. <laughs> the more droopy, the better. <laughs> you know what, that is a, those are just fascinating stitches in this beautiful kimono. One of our patterns for the series is just absolutely elegant the way you have done it. And now I have a beautiful doll dress to share with you. I think this is one of the most beautiful doll dresses I have ever seen in my life. Modeling this doll dress is the doll named Cecil Elizabeth. It is so beautiful and there's so many details I hardly even know where to start. Look at this magnificent little collar with the hand done bullion rosebuds and rosebuds. This dress is made out of the pink Swiss Batiste called Nalona. Now let me just gently turn her around here. I don't think I've ever seen a prettier doll sleeve in my whole life with a little puffy sleeve, the entredeau which uh, closes the bottom of the puff, the little hand embroidery, and the little uh, edging on the bottom of the ruffle. Now let me turn her back around. I'm going to hold this skirt out just a little bit so you can see the incredible details on the skirt. It is so pretty. And by the way, this skirt is very easy to do. I'm going to show you how in just a minute. With this little crisscross lace pieces and the hand done roses and then the little uh, fancy band ruffle on the bottom. And the dress is so pretty on the back. I'm even going to turn her around so you can see how beautiful the collar on this dress is in the back. See the little pointy collar? And then it goes down and more of the beautiful crisscrosses which end up in a little diamond on the skirt. Now you're probably not going to believe it, but this dress is not hard to make. So let me turn this sweet little doll back around, turn Cecil Elizabeth back around. First of all, let me share with you the beginning French sewing techniques for making the little ruffle. First of all, I gather the ruffle, run two rows of gathering, and then I place the entredeau flat on the ruffle. And the first thing I do is a straight stitch called stitch in the ditch, right next to the entredeau. Now I will pull this piece down and show you next. I trim away about half of that seam allowance from the stitch in the ditch. And then there's one more real simple little operation. After I trim away about half of the seam allowance, I simply come back and zigzag the whole thing, rolling, rolling, rolling that excess seam allowance into the seam. And then do you see how beautifully the entredeau is attached? To make that wonderful crisscross diamond piece, we're first of all going to zigzag three pieces of lace together. Then I make points, triangular points, one, two, and three to know where to line it up. Then I take my zigzag pieces, and you, as you can see I've done here, and line them up one point to the next point, one point to the next point, and so forth and so on. Now these three have already been zigzagged together. I will stitch down the outside and the outside, 
Then I turn it to the back, slit the fabric underneath it, fold it back, and then I go back and zigzag. Now, why did I not just cut it away? Well, sometimes when you zigzag over a bias area, as you can see we have done here, we just need this extra stable lace finish. So let me refresh your memory one more time. I straight stitch both sides. Then I go to the back and slit the fabric, fold it back, and then zigzag using a stabilizer right on top. Now to get my final row, I've, I've already gotten this done for you here, to get the final lace on it, I'm going to do the extra stable lace finish one more time, where I have straight stitched the lace down, folded the fabric, straight stitched the lace down, folded the fabric to the back, and then I put a stabilizer, let me get the whole thing folded under here, then I put a stabilizer underneath there, and I'm simply going to zigzag. This is the extra stable lace finish on the back also. Remember, I straight stitched it. Now let me go under here and fold back a little more, and you know what, I guess I should have pressed that a little bit tighter, and certainly you will do that. All right, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna zigzag over that straight stitching, and this will give me an extra stable lace finish. And then, when I finish it, I will come in and of course tear away the stabilizer. Tear away both the pieces of stabilizer. And once again, I will come in here and trim away all of this excess fabric. I don't need that, I'll just trim it away. And indeed, I do have an extra stable lace finish, which, which is what that is called. Let me refresh this one more time, extra stable lace finish. On the bottom of the skirt, to do extra stable lace finish, I bring the lace up about, oh, that's maybe three quarters of an inch on the skirt, the width of the lace, and I lay it down. I straight stitch it down to the fabric, then I fold it back, see the piece of fabric that's folded back there? And using a stabilizer, I come in and zigzag down over that seam I just made, and once again, I will come in and trim away that seam allowance, and that is extra stable lace finishing. Won't you come along to my attic with me? This beautiful little dress I bought in England at a flea market several years ago. The top has this absolutely wonderful little eyelet ruffle. Let me show you how pretty this yoke is. Three tucks and three tucks, and then on top of the tucks, a little precious uh, Swiss insertion has been stitched down and then made into a little rooftop, a little rooftop, a little rooftop. Well, then you have a wonderful eyelet edging that goes around. And the skirt is absolutely fabulous too. Three tucks, three tucks, three tucks, three tucks. And once again, the theme of the eyelet in insertion has been stitched down on top of the tucks, this time at an angle, and has been rounded into a little rooftop, or rather pointed into a little rooftop on the top. Now the skirt is really sweet too. It appears that it has two layers of eyelet, and it does. But I think this mother only had some narrow eyelet, so instead of putting a long piece of eyelet underneath it, she just used her skirt fabric to make a longer piece of eyelet. And by the way, that's a really nice thing to do if you just have a little narrow Swiss insertion, and also an economical thing to do because it means you get a wider piece without spending quite the amount of money for the double eyelet edged ruffle. Isn't that a beautiful dress? I want to thank every one of you for coming to visit with me in my sewing room today. I've had a good time and I certainly hope you have. Most importantly, I'd like to invite you to, jo to join us next time.